Hey everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcast, covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in global connectivity, real estate, and the networks within. We are broadcasting live right now across multiple social platforms, so thank you everyone for joining us today, wherever you may be tuning in. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya, CEO and founder of JSA. And today we're talking data center optimization and sustainability with Raymond Burrell, the new senior sales executive for EchoSense. Raymond, welcome to JSA TV. Thank you for having me, Jamie. Pleasure to be here. We are so excited, so honored. Big news, big first few months really for you as you uh, make your official move over to uh, EchoSense. You just recently joined. Tell us what drew you to EchoSense? Uh, it's a good question. Um, you know, we live in a, a, a very niche, small world in the mission critical world. So a lot of times you end up hearing through your network and your colleagues about different companies or upcoming innovation. And this was no different. I had a colleague of mine that I worked with for many years at our previous company together and did a lot of really successful solutions, software sales together. And when he left after such a long tenure to go to EchoSense, it piqued my curiosity. And I spent some time at his request as well, kind of diving in, learning more about them and how we might be able to collaborate together as he took on this new role. So that's how they kind of came to me at first. Um, but then upon like diving deeper and looking at them, there's just a lot of synergies and alignments with my, my personal life and what I believe in. I am a very pro sustainability and environmental advocate. And so their, their focus on getting to net zero and having a thermally optimized environment. Um, you know, I used to call it retro commissioning way back in the day when I was doing it earlier. Um, these things really rang true for me, but then they step into machine learning and, and artificial intelligence, and they really start to try to bend the curve, I believe, uh, enriching data in a way that's useful for a data center owner and operator. So I feel like all those things kind of really coalesced well for me and, and aligned with me uh, personally, and I'm a big believer in fit is very important in life, and I felt like there was the, the fit was there. Yeah, for sure. Good people attracting good people and also that fit with the core values and uh, what makes you tick, what's, uh, what excites you. Um, very much in alignment with EchoSense. For our viewers who might not know, uh, describe what EchoSense is offering data center operators in the U.S. that's missing from the market, particularly in the States today. Yeah, no, good question. Um, so it's interesting, you know, the, ter the term missing, you know, I don't want to, uh, I guess, give off the impression that these folks aren't doing these things or these aren't available. But I also uh, kind of believe in the adage that you don't really create new things, but you put things together that have never been put together in a way that is new and, and, and fresh and, and brings value. And so I believe, you know, having a software solutions background, BMS, EPMS, DSIM, I've sold these solutions integrated to customers before. So I understand the challenges that come with, you know, a customer trying to come up to speed to learn how to interact with and operate these different software platforms, how to like, enrich data and make it useful for them. So all these things are, are a bit of a struggle, especially when you get turnover, uh, new guys you got to train, et cetera. So EchoSense has a really good job of taking what is already existing in a very light touch way, gathering that data, allowing machine learning and AI to really start to optimize it so that it's enriched in a, in a way that the, the user really can find value in it. So it's easy to use, it's intuitive. Um, it really does, I think, take what is a very complicated software stack and kind of shrink it down into a really manageable um, uh, size for data center operator specifically. So I just think that they've really kind of cracked the code on that. Um, and it's very complimentary, right? So it, I find no other software system currently offers the exact type of software and visualization and, and optimization. Some have something similar here and there, but the way they do it is they're not trying to replace anyone at the, that's sitting at the table. They're really just trying to aggregate the data, enrich it in a way that's useful for the owner. Uh, and I think it, 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 they really kind of nailed it on the head with that. And it's just uh, really well received when you deal with the people on a daily basis that have to interact with the racks and the server config configurations, et cetera. Well, you mentioned uh, your background with DSIM, BMS, other SaaS platforms. Where does EchoSense really fit into the overall tech stack as compared to those other platforms for data center operators? Yeah, you know, it's a good question. So it's it's complementary. It's it's um, you know uh, I wouldn't want to call it a, a, akin to a module, but in my previous role, 
I had a software platform to integrate it with many modules and advisors and different things. I would say this is more like potentially an optimization and capacity planning kind of like advisory tool. It's really meant to be an, a complementary add-on to the existing stacks that exist. Um, we really want to, using vendor agnostic protocols, use whatever hardware that you have, whatever existing software, but really bring that data together and then get us a, a proper bench line for how to then inform you as you move forward. So then the machine learning, the artificial intelligence start to kick in. And then also your your relationship with the data center owner, like what their goals are, what their KPIs are, what their SLAs are, like what compliance do they need to, to meet? When you put all that together, it becomes a really uh, useful, valuable, and rich tool for that day-to-day -day use. Yeah, that word value coming up again and again here. And that's what I see. I see a lot of us uh, data center operators and just business owners alike getting overwhelmed with the amount of data that is now all of a sudden at our fingertips. How do we actually make sense and make it improve our operations? It seems yeah. like uh, there's a real need for EchoSense right here, right now. But what can we expect from EchoSense over the next year? Um, so, you know, this was a, uh, an interesting question for me. I thought a lot of different ways about how to pitch this per se, but I believe it's just commitment, commitment to the U.S. market, right? So it's an internationally known first uh, organization, and they've done a fantastic job deploying throughout the world, and they've definitely followed many clients to the states. But with the investment of individuals like myself, my colleagues, Travis and Kopi and others that are industry stalwarts in this, in this world, we're really committing very heavily to the United States market, making sure we're supporting these customers as we transition across the pond or come across the Pacific and then really grow and expand that footprint to make sure we're serving these customers regardless of their geography. Um, I would say innovation is going to be what we're bringing to the table and a bit of disruption. You know, we do want uh, in our collaborative and, and want to be vendor agnostic and, and are, but the reality is, is in order to, to create change, you have to go through a little bit of pain, right? There's a little bit of challenge that happens. There's going to have to move through that. And we're here really for the next year to sit with our customers to move through those challenges and that pain and get to the other side where the innovation and, and the new opportunity with AI and machine learning and all these other things can really come into a clearer view. Because right now, I just don't think it's very clear how AI is going to really impact us. We all know we need more compute. We all know it's super sexy and exciting. I've created documents with ChatGPT. I see all the potential in the world. Uh, at the end of the day, though, there still is the human element that must be addressed, right? And we still also must understand technology really needs to bend to our will, not us bending to its will. And it feels like right now we're a little bit being bent to its will, and we need to kind of, I think, find that balance. So this next year, it's going to be about stability and commitment to the states. It's going to be about helping owners to get through this challenge, whether it's the market or new technology or a request for crazy amount of compute. Right. And then we're going to help them to 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 realize and bend the digital curve to their will. Oh, I just love that. Stability, commitment, innovation, um, all absolutely hallmarks of EchoSense. Excited to have that feet on the street here in the States. Raymond Burrell, thank you so much for your time here. And absolutely. thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts. Always excited to have you. Everyone stay connected and happy networking. Thanks, Jamie.